you may be saying to yourself, am I drunk or am I high? How can Washington be a top 25 team when they return only four starters and are number 125 in production? We'll talk about it in just one minute. I am Ralph Michaels. We are breaking down the gold sheet top 25. These are the top 25 power rated teams in their summer 2024 summer power ratings. There will be some adjustments going into the football season. We are recording this on July 26th, and these are their current odds from DraftKings as of today. National championship, you can get 300 to 1. Conference championship, 80 to 1. Imagine that, a team that was in the finals last year, 80 to 1 to win their conference. College football playoffs, yes, plus 900, no, minus 1,800. Season win total, six and a half. The over minus 105, the under minus 115. No odds to go undefeated, obviously. And Will Rogers, their quarterback, his Heisman odds, 130 to one. Well, let's take a look back at that magical season. And it really wasn't that magical when you look at the stats and look at the close games. They were very fortunate to be where they were. Yards per play, number 33. Not bad, but not national championship level. They were only plus 1.27 yards per play. Yards per game and points per game on offense, number 12 and number 13. Yards per game on defense, number 99. Points per game on defense, number 56. They did play the number one toughest schedule. And when you look at the toughest schedule with that production, efficiency ranks, number five on offense, number 28 on defense. They, of course, went 14-1, and 7-7-1 seven, seven, and one against the spread, and 7-8 and eight over under. How about if I told you this? They had eight close games. I went back the last 23 years. No team in college football has had eight close games and won them all. The top was plus seven. So imagine every close game they won on the year, that's exactly why they are. They were only plus eight yards per game in Pac-12 action. That is like a 500 team, and they went undefeated. Against Arizona, they led 14-0 and 21-10. Arizona scored a late touchdown to cut it to seven, so that really wasn't that close of a game. In the first game, the regular season game against Oregon, seven lead changes. They gave up a TD with 138 left, but they got an 18-yard TD pass, 18-yard TD pass to win that first Oregon game. In the rematch, they led 20 to three, but they trailed 24-20 into the fourth quarter. They took a 10-point lead, allowed a touchdown with two minutes to go, and held on. Arizona State. They were an emotional letdown spot after beating Oregon the first time. They trailed 7-6. to six. This mighty offense trailed 7-6 to six into the fourth quarter. And you know how they won the game? An 89-yard interception return for a touchdown gave them the final margin. Utah, they trailed 28-24 at halftime. They scored 11 points in the third quarter. It was a scoreless fourth quarter. They hold on to win. And Oregon State was a quagmire, folks. It rained hard the entire day. They led 22-10 at halftime. They got outscored 10-0 in the second half. They did not score in the second half, but they hung on to win that game. And in the Apple Cup, tied at 7, tied at 14, tied at 21, and they got a 42-yard field goal on the final play. So again, for a team to be that fortunate, eke out that many close wins, have zero close losses. Again, no team in college football the last 23 years has had eight close games and has won them all. Congrats to the Huskies last year. Before we look at the 2024 team, please take one second. Hit that like button. We certainly appreciate it. Please take a minute to comment. Are we totally off on Washington? Will they tank? Do you think they'll cover their season win total? Please share your thoughts as we're excited to go through each and every one of them as we get closer to the season. And also, the work that Goldsheet has done in the summer, 
tells you why they are the best newsletter and the longest longevity of a football newsletter in the country. As part of Wager Talk, I'm very proud that we acquired Gold Sheet a few years ago. You can save $30 off the football newsletter subscription with the code GS30. You can head to goldsheet.com or wagertalk.com. Use that code at either site. You'll get a weekly newsletter from week zero through the Super Bowl, and it is jam-packed, and we keep improving the gold sheet each and every year. You'll be glad you signed up. Well, as I said, the 2024 team, one of the bottom as far as returning productions. Let's look at the Big Ten conference cheat sheet. You see, we haven't power rated at 21. We'll talk about that in a minute. Only four legitimate returning starters. Number 125 as far as returning production goes. An entire new coaching staff. But they were a top 30 team in recruiting, part of the reason we have them here. And number ninth in the Big Ten. They went transfer heavy, guys. 28 transfers they brought in. Now, they didn't have many superstars. Let me give you an example. They had 28 transfers, which was number three in the Big Ten as far as talent goes. Ohio State was ahead of them with only seven transfers because they brought in several five-star recruits and several strong four-star recruits. But let's take a look. Their past returning starters the last three years, 15, 15, and 18, Obviously a huge drop. Draft doesn't get much bigger than this. Last year, they lost 10 players, 46 points. That was number one in college football last year, guys. 46-point loss, number one. Guess what? The year before, Washington lost zero players in the draft. Two years ago, they lost four players for 17 points. Now, as I look at their team this year, why do we have them so high with off so many close games and bereft of so much returning talent? Well, when you have a team that has played as well as they did down the stretch on offense, there's a lot of guys that play backups. You see their recruiting class. You see the transfers they brought in. And I just want to give you an example. They were number 125 as far as returning production goes coming into the season. Last year, Bama was number 122. Bama the year before went 11 and 2. And last year, number 122 in returning production, Bama went 12 and 2. So don't automatically assume four returning starters, oh my God, this team is going to be horrible. They're going to finish last in the Big Ten. That will not be the case. They still have a lot of decent backup talent and a lot of quality transfers. Talking about some of those transfers. Again, the quarterback, when you lose the number one draft choice like Penix, it's tough. But Will Rogers, the last two years at Mississippi State, almost 4,000 yards, 68%, and a 35-8 ratio last year, 4,700 yards, 74% completions, and a 36-9 ratio two years ago. So put that together, that's a 71 to 17 ratio the previous two years. They do lose a 1,200-yard rusher, but they get back an injured Davis, who is out for the year. Davis was expected to be the number one running back. So even though they lose their number one running back and a 1,200-yard rusher, they're still in good shape with a very talented back. Receivers. All right, you want to talk about maybe the worst position in entire college football? They lost their top eight receivers. Four of them were NFL draft choices, including a first-round draft choice, a second-round draft choice, a third-round draft choice, and a number seven-round draft choice. That is exactly why they have so many receiver transfers, and there's going to be some young kids that are excited to get a chance to play having a quarterback with that success and no returning upperclassmen in front of you. The O-line? They lost all five, including a number one and number two draft choice. We'll have to see how that melds out. The defense, they lost their top two tacklers and six of their top ten. So that means they're returning their number three, four, and five tacklers. 
The DB loses all four, including one draft choice. The linebackers lose two starters, including a draft choice. And the DBs lose two, including one. So again, it looks ugly on paper. I understand that, guys. But I am a big Jed Fish fan. Remember, Jed Fish took over an 0-6 team. A team went 0-6 during the COVID year. They brought in Jed Fish the next season. While he went 1-11 this year, I don't think you can compare the Arizona situation to Washington. Number one, Arizona didn't have success. Fish had a plan in place, building from within and recruiting. So he could go 1-11 his first year. By the way, he improved to 5-7 and seven, and then 10-3 and three last year. Washington has a lot of NIL money. He was able to go out and get those transfers, which wasn't pop, pop, possible in Arizona. But we do have a coach that has rebuilt a team, and that's why he is the perfect coach in this situation. The 2024 Washington schedule, number 21 as far as our strength of schedule. Double-digit favorite in five games, including the first four. That will get this young team some experience, and we'll see if how that progresses into the Big Ten season. We expect them to be a double-dog jig dog in two games. You see those are marked in red. The small favorite and small dogs, those marked in gray between the eights. We have them as a small favorite in three games. At home, minus two. On the road, minus four. And at home, minus eight. Have them a small dog in two games. Away plus one and home plus seven. They have two buys this year. Against Indiana and against Oregon. Both before road games. Indiana is off a bye and a home game against Nebraska. So they will be fresh, but they do have a game the week prior to Washington. And against Oregon, Oregon's the only team that has a bye against Washington prior to playing them. So those are a wash in that. A couple spots I want to point out against Rutgers. They'll be playing a fifth straight game against Rutgers. Rutgers will be off a bye in a Virginia Tech game. And take a look, they'll be playing their seventh straight game at Iowa. I'll have more on that game with my best bet in just a minute on Better's Edge. Okay, guys, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Please smash that like button and make sure you subscribe to Wager Talk TV. Find out why over 160,000 people are already subscribed. We like to finish each of these videos with some ATS and over-under information, any situations you should be aware of. Again, the better edge, we talked about how Fish went 1-11 his first year. But if you look at his entire body of work as a head coach, he's 23-13 and 13 against the spread, 64%. At home, 13-7 and 7 against the spread, 7-13 and 13 over-under when hosting their opponent. On the road, 9-6 and six ATS, 8-6-1 and one over under. When Fish's teams are a dog of six or more, he's gone 12-4 and four against the spread. And off a straight-up loss, his teams have gone 11-3 and three against the spread. Now, there are no current lines for Washington and Iowa on October 10th, but this is the game I want you to circle. When we start seeing these games out, take a look at this line and we'll see what happens. The projected line we have is Iowa minus one. I actually will lay up to a point and a half more with Iowa if there's a summer line on this game. So when Iowa is playing Washington, if we get a summer line of Iowa minus two and a half or less, or if they're a dog, it would make it an even better bet. I will look at that situation to see if I can play it. Washington may start off 4-0 as they're a double-digit favorite in all those games, but you have this young team playing seven straight weeks, so no bye weeks to stay fresh, no bye weeks to change up a lot of any assignments or any type of offensive changes. They finished that stretch with their first true road game at Rutgers, flying across the country. Come back, host a very physical Michigan team, and now have to travel back out to Iowa. 
So a lot of travel in that three weeks fresh. Now, when we look at Iowa's schedule, Iowa is coming off Ohio State. So they're likely going to have a loss. They also have a bye before Ohio State, so they're still going to be much fresher than Washington. And by the way, Iowa, 16-7-5 against the spread at home off a loss. And again, they're playing Ohio State the week before. So 90% plus, they are off a loss. And if they are off an embarrassing loss, a loss by seven or more points, Ference's teams are 16, 4, and 2, 80%. Add it up. My best bet for better's edge for the number 24 Washington Huskies. Fade the Huskies when they travel to Iowa October the 10th. Make sure you check out who we have as the number 25 team. Plus, we'll be doing some more bonus videos. Comment on what type of videos you would like to see Gold Sheet include for this upcoming season. And if you missed any of the top 25, folks, we break down every one of these teams the exact same way. We started with the odds. We look back at last year's team. We break down this year's teams. We dissect the schedule. And we finish with better's edge and a best bet. Check out the previous top 24 teams. Thanks for tuning in.